Following distance. The space around the front of your bus is one of the most important spaces. You must always protect this space. Improper following distance can cause you to rear end the vehicle in front of you. We're going to talk about the three factors that help maintain proper following distance. They are perception distance, reaction distance, and braking distance. These make up your total distance until the vehicle is stopped. Perception distance is the amount of time, and therefore the distance traveled, from the time you see a hazard until your brain can recognize and process that it is a hazard. This is the time it takes for a driver to be aware of what is going to happen in and around his or her surroundings. As a driver, you must understand that it takes longer for some drivers to see and react to a situation than others. Part of the problem is concentration of the driver. The perception time for an alert driver is approximately three-fourths of a second. Reaction distance is the distance your vehicle travels while you move your foot from the accelerator to the brake pedal once the hazard has been identified. Again, the average reaction time of most people is three-fourths of a second. So with the perception time and reaction time, you are automatically at a 1.5 second disadvantage. Braking distance is the distance required to stop the vehicle once the brakes are applied. Stopping distance is the time and space it takes the driver to stop once they have perceived the hazard and start evasive action until the vehicle stops. The stopping distance varies according to the speed of which the vehicle is traveling, along with a few other factors. Poor road conditions can also have an impact on stopping distance and could lead to it taking longer to stop the vehicle. The heavier the vehicle, the more work the brakes must do to stop. Slow down and begin to brake sooner to account for these factors. In adverse weather conditions, stopping distance will be regularly increased. Drivers should increase the following distance accordingly. Here are some simple steps to help you get following distance. Step 1. Select a landmark ahead of the vehicle that is nearest the front of your bus in your lane. Step 2. When the rear bumper of the vehicle ahead passes the landmark, start counting 1001, 1002, 1003, etc. Step 3. Stop counting when the front bumper of your bus reaches the landmark. This is your following distance in seconds. Our following distance standard under ideal conditions is when traveling 0 to 40 miles per hour, you should be at least 4 seconds behind. If you start to move over 40 miles per hour, you should bump that up to 5 seconds behind. If the weather becomes bad and you get rain, you should be at least 6 seconds behind. For snow, bump it up to 7 seconds behind. Ice, you should be at least 8 seconds behind. Of course, you should use your best judgment based on road conditions to determine the proper following distance. From time to time, you may experience tailgaters. Your following distance is for the safety in front of you, yourself, and your passengers. If there's a tailgater behind you, don't speed up on the account of the tailgater. Slow gradually and let them pass. Are you ready for a challenge? Let's talk about the 1 equals 44 awareness challenge. It takes a professional driver approximately 1.5 seconds to recognize a hazard and react. When you are traveling 30 miles per hour, you are covering 44 feet per second. Will you be aware and react in time? Remember to look far enough ahead to get the overall view of the road and be prepared to react. Challenge yourself to be aware. Hello, let's take a few minutes to talk about pre-trip and post-trip inspections. Pre-trip and post-trip inspections are a very important part of your duties as a professional operator. Pre-trips help you make sure your vehicle and its systems are functioning properly and are in good working order and are safe to operate. Pre-trips are designed to maintain the safety of your vehicle for you and your passengers. 
you need to know how to look over your vehicle effectively and note any issues you find on the DVIR. We have a method we follow that helps guide us through the pre-chip process, so we don't forget to check anything. You may have heard the comparison of an airline pilot and how they have a detailed checklist they must complete before every takeoff. As you can imagine, it is very important that they not skip through anything or any area on their aircraft to ensure their safety and the passenger's safety. You don't want anything to fail or go wrong 300,000 feet in the air. Likewise, an inspection of a passenger carrying vehicle is just as important. So think about it. You also don't want anything to fail or go wrong when you're out delivering service for your customers. Your mission as an operator is to never put a vehicle with a safety-related defect into service. Completing a pre-chip will help you accomplish that goal. Here is what these inspections do for us. Increase overall safety by revealing defects, dangers, or problems before they lead to major consequences. Prevent crashes and fires by identifying major defects early so they can be fixed. Limit vehicle downtime by finding and fixing small problems rather than having to react to a major problem. Prevent breakdowns on the road and costly towing and repairs. Prevent interruption of service for our passengers and enhance the customer experience. Comply with the required federal and state regulations. The bottom line is this. Inspections help stop accidents before they start. Next, we'll discuss the DVIR. The DVIR will help you document and record anything you find wrong during your pre-trip inspection. The DVIR will also be used by maintenance personnel to correct any of the defects you indicate. It can be in a paper format or digital, depending on what your location's procedure is. The DVIR must be filled out accurately and completely for each vehicle you operate. You must be satisfied that the vehicle is in safe operating condition. Only the operator that will be driving the vehicle will need to fill out the DVIR. What is it that has to be checked when performing a pre-chip inspection? Regulations state that you should at the minimum, check the following items. Service brakes, parking brakes, steering mechanism, lighting devices and reflectors, tires, horn, windshield wiper, rear vision mirrors, wheels and rims, emergency equipment, overall appearance of the vehicle, engine compartment, operator compartment, complete walk around inspection, customer area, brake system, wheelchair, lift, and ramp. All of these items will be checked in an eight-step method that goes as follows. Step one, check overall vehicle appearance. Step two, check engine compartment, if contract applicable while engine is off. Step three, perform a safe start. Step four, activate lights and inspect inside cab. Step five, complete walk-around inspection looking especially for fluid leaks. Step six, check brake systems. Step seven, cycle lift slash ramp and verify ADA. Step eight, check customer area inside the vehicle. This list is just an overview of a very detailed process that will help you complete a thorough inspection. The pre-trip inspection is very detailed and all of the aforementioned areas need to be complete within the time allotted. You also have to be in compliance with company guidelines and DOT regulations. These items are very important to the safety of your vehicle and your passengers so you can deliver excellent customer service. Thank you. Our bodies are very much like the machines we depend on every day. When we use them for lifting objects, we should be aware that we are applying proper mechanics to avoid injury and support a longer, healthier life. Here are the top 10 rules for lifting. 1. Do not try to lift objects if you are unable to get a good grip, even if they are not heavy. This includes items that are too bulky 
awkward, or too large to handle securely. Two, don't move or lift objects by yourself if they are heavier than 40 pounds. Get help or use some type of mechanical aid. Three, to pick up an object that is lower than the level of your waist, keep your back as straight as possible and bend at your knees and hips. Do not bend forward at the waist with your knees straight. Use the short stop position. Four, never twist while under load. Turn your feet, do not twist at the waist. Twisting takes your spine out of alignment and makes you vulnerable to injury. Five, stand with a wide stance close to the object you are trying to pick up. Keep both your feet flat on the ground. Make sure you have firm, dry flooring. Six, straighten your knees in a smooth, steady motion. Don't jerk the load up. Seven, when reaching overhead, use a step stool or ladder to bring yourself up to the level of what you are reaching. Eight, get your body as close as possible to the load. Keep your elbows in tight to your sides. Nine, always use two hands to lift the load. 10. Make sure you can see the top of what you are trying to lift. Any unseen object can slide off and strike your head, face, or eyes. These are the top 10 lifting rules. Follow them to avoid injury. Now let's talk about ergonomics in the driver's seat. Proper positioning of the seat for good posture. Adjust the depth and height of the seat so your feet can comfortably reach the pedals and ensure they can be pressed all the way through. The seat should be adjusted so the arms are slightly bent to grasp the steering wheel at the 9 and 3 position. Back is straight against the seat and will not be stretched forward when using push and pull method when turning. The thigh should be completely supported by the seat. The back of the knee should be about 1 to 2 inches from the seat cushion. Now let's talk about the tilt of your seat back. Adjust the seat back so you're sitting nearly completely vertically or upright. At most, you should be tilted back 10 degrees. The lumbar support should fit comfortably into the curve of your lower back. Your back should not be rounded. Always maintain the natural curve of your spine, even in the driver's seat. Ensure the back is leaning on the backrest from the buttock to the shoulder blades. Adjust based off your comfortability. The neck support should reach the base of the skull, the large bump on the back of your head, without you having to move your head backwards. If needed, adjust the built-in cushioning at the middle and low back so that the seat is molded to fit the individual curve of your spine. If the built-in adjustments are not sufficient, you may consider adding your own cushions such as a folded towel or a sweater. Here are some tips to follow when driving. Lean your whole trunk forward, tilting from the hip joint to see better, rock and roll in your seat, reach any controls in front. Do not move your chin or head forward to see better or let your shoulders or shoulder blades round forward. Lean forward from your hips. Do not slump down over the steering wheel. Note the posture of your back at any given time and keep it vertical. Ergonomics also comes into play when you're securing and releasing wheelchair straps. Keep your spine straight as you reach for the straps or other controls. Bend from the hips and knees instead of from the waist. This will help limit the strain on your back. Remember, be mindful of your posture and your body mechanics, always checking in with yourself and practicing safe and healthy habits. Doing this will ensure a safe day at work and another trip home injury-free to the ones that count on you.